Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle, and today I'm going to talk about fear. Fear is part of being an entrepreneur. Fear is actually about being alive. Fear is part of living. It's part of the mechanism or experience that we have in life. It helps to keep us alive. Fear, you know what fear is like. Your breath gets short, your heart beats faster, your eyes dilate, you feel immobilized, or you feel like you want to run away. And uh, it makes it very hard to take action. Because here's the thing, you're operating from the lower brain stem, from a very primitive part of your brain. And it, uh, it's not a very successful, hi, thanks for joining me. We're talking about fear. Please post in your comments, what are the kind of things that causes fear in your life? What brings up fear? Are you afraid of looking at your bank account? Are you afraid that you are gonna be rejected by your husband or your partner or your daughter? Are you afraid? Hi, thanks for joining. And what are you afraid of? Please post in the comments. What are you afraid of? What brings fear up in your life? Of course, we've started a new year. Are you afraid that it's gonna be more of the same? Are you afraid of what this year has to promise you? Are you afraid that maybe last year wasn't so good and you're not, or maybe it was good and you're not gonna do as well this year? What kind of things are bringing fear up in your life? And what can you do about it? So maybe right now, are you feeling fearful? You can tell because your breath is not coming easily, or maybe there's tension in your body. Maybe you know you feel tension in your shoulders or in your arms, or maybe you feel like your legs are ready to just run away. The problem with fear is it really gets in the way of success. It is counter to success. Now, of course, it's got a purpose. It helps to keep you alive. It was put in these bodies in order to, thank you, to make sure that uh, you survive. But it can really get in the way of your ability to, to succeed, to take action. It gets in the way of feeling confident about yourself. So what are the other kinds of things that get in the way of your uh, feeling confident? What kind of things bring fear up in your life? For example, do you have, it's the beginning of the month, are you supposed to be paying your rent or your mortgage and maybe you don't have enough money? Or maybe you have enough money for that, but you have this huge bill that's waiting for you because you just went through the holidays and you bought all these presents for, for your family. And now you're wondering, how are you gonna pay all of that? And when you're in that place of fear, you're not operating from the more intelligent part of your brain. You're actually operating from the lower brain stem, from a very primitive part of your brain. And all that, it's very instinctive, and all it wants to do is run away and hide. Do you feel like you just wanna run away and hide, stay in bed, not get up? It can really get in the way of what you need to do to be successful. For example, make more money. If you are in fear, you're not gonna be thinking about what are the best ways. You're not gonna be creative, you're not gonna be intelligent because you're operating from that place of fear. So what to do about it? What do you do about this fear that's getting in the way of you being successful and making a difference? Now, humans take fear to a whole different level. With, with animals, when the fear happens, they fight, flee, or freeze. The cause of the fear is gone, the fear is gone. The lion's not there, no problem, the gazelle goes back to grazing. 
But when it comes to human beings, we have this amazing brain that has the capacity to remember. Now that's really good when it comes to problem solving or to thinking about how to best handle situations, but it also can be a liability. It can really get in the way of you getting over your fear because your brain keeps on coming up with, with the memory of it and re-triggering the fear. It actually re-triggers the fear, even if there's no reason right now, I mean, there are no lions in this room, there's no reason to be afraid. The rent may not be due today, you may have until the end of the week, and yet right now, maybe you feel immobilized. Or maybe you're thinking about, oh, I need to call make calls to get clients. I need to get more clients. But maybe the last time you called the client, you, re you didn't get the sale. Now maybe the client really didn't have the money, but it doesn't make any difference because you feel rejected and you then feel fearful the next time you make that call. And you just, you know, just hold yourself together and you just make that call. Well, here's the problem your clients, your prospects, they can tell. They can tie. Thank you for joining. We're talking about fear and what are the kind of things that make you fearful and hold you back from success in your life. So if you have some, please go ahead and write them in the comments section. And if you have questions, please go ahead and put that there and I will try and answer them. So fear is part of our, part of being alive but it also can get in the way of us having happiness and success in our lives. Because when we're operating from a place of fear, we're operating from a place that holds us back, that prevents us from thinking intelligently, from being creative. So what to do? I'm checking my notes. As I said before, animals, they don't have a pro the problem that we have. They, the fear, the cause of the fear is gone, no problem. It's gone, it ceases to exist. Uh, my cousin had a cat one time. She went out into the street and she got hit by a car and it actually knocked one of her eyes out. She was blind in one eye, but she did not spend one moment in remorse. She simply adapted. What do we do? We start thinking about how it could have been different, how we were stupid, how we can avoid that in the future and beat ourselves up over and over again. And when we do that, we are stimulating that fear mechanism because the body does not know the difference between your thoughts and actual fear, actual things that cause fear in front of you right here and now. So for example, maybe you have a bunch of bills that you're concerned about paying. Well, do you need to pay them right now? It doesn't matter. If you're thinking about them, you can start getting really fearful, even though you may not have to pay them in this moment, because that is the power of the human brain. As a PhD psychosocial analyst with over 20 years of experience working with people around emotional issues, particularly grief and loss, I have found that there are two keys to handling and managing fear. You can imagine that fear comes up a lot after loss, like how am I going to survive without my partner? Or nobody is ever going to love me again, or my life is going to be like this for the rest of my life. I'm going to be miserable. I'm going to be depressed. So fear can come up a lot with the people that I work with. And what I have found is two keys, biology and biography. Biology is of course this body and the body's response to things that cause fear. And when we're in that state of fear, it is very hard for us to operate from a place of intelligence because we have literally dropped down into the lower brain stem. And when we're in that place of fear, we are literally exuding that energy of fear all over the place. 
So you're not going to have success when you are in fear. So the other key is what I call biography. That is your life experience. How you deal with fear and the kinds of things that cause fear are really part of your biography. What happened to you throughout your life? Oftentimes, and many times, things that happened when you were children, when you were a child. You created a survival pattern. Now, it doesn't matter whether or not you had a terrible childhood. I actually didn't have a terrible childhood, and yet it doesn't take much for a small, vulnerable child to develop fears and to develop survival patterns. And these are the patterns that get in the way of our ability to manage fear. So when I work with my clients, I help them to manage their fear, to deal with the emotional energy of fear, and to develop practices which I like to call emotional hygiene, where they release those emotions and they don't get bogged down. I actually had a client come to me who, hi, thanks for joining. Hi, Anna. We are talking about fear and how to manage fear in your life so that it doesn't bog you down. It doesn't prevent you from having success. And one of the problems with fear, hi, thanks for joining. One of the problems with fear is that it gets in the way of you taking action. Or if you take action, thanks for joining, if you take any kind of action, it tends to be run away or fight or freeze. And so to get out of that state, you need to handle, hi, thanks for joining, you need to handle that state of fear. And that's one of the things that I work with my clients on is how to handle emotions because this is not just in our heads. This is a physiological response to a perceived threat. And I emphasize the word perceived because it doesn't have to actually be in front of you. It can be something that you have in your mind that reminds you to be afraid. It may be that you have a bill to pay or that you have to go meet with a client and you are afraid that you're gonna blow it or that you won't have the money, or you've got to get that client or you're not going to have the money. And the problem is that when you are operating from that fear state, you actually reverberate, you send that energy out, and everybody can feel it. So you really need to learn how to manage your fear. You need to manage that emotion. And that's what I do with my clients, is I teach them emotional hygiene, how to release that fear so that it doesn't show up, it doesn't get in the way of your success. So one of the things is managing the emotional energy. And once you release the energy, the other thing you need to manage are your patterns, your thought patterns. And these can go all the way back to when you were a child. Habits that will re-trigger the fear now you don't want to do that, okay? You've just gotten rid of the fear and now the thoughts come in and there they are, they're triggered all over again. Well, we want, it. we want to change that. So if you want to know a little bit more about how I do that, how I work with my clients, there is a link in the comments section. Let's have a 15 minute introductory conversation and I can tell you how I work and uh, what my programs are and what my prices are. Another client who came to me who was dealing with fear, I mean, she was totally immobilized. She was at staying at home. She had health issues. She wasn't getting out. Her husband was also, also had health issues, but he was the breadwinner. And so she was terrified. Hi, Anna. She was terrified that she was going to lose him. And that really immobilized her. But, and she was depressed, and she wasn't eating right, and she was gaining weight, and she was becoming more immobilized. And we started working together. And the first thing that happened is she started to have more confidence. So here's the real key to managing fear, and that is success. When you feel successful, the fear goes away. 
because most of our fear is about not being successful, isn't it? We're fearful that people are not going to love us, people are not going to buy our products, people are not going to care about us, people are going to leave us, we're going to be alone, abandoned, out on the streets, not be able to survive. That, that, that's a pretty scary fear, isn't it? So that was her fear, but success. She started to feel better about herself. And pretty soon she was in the community, in her senior community, teaching a course on how to write, because that was her skill. And what's interesting is when you actually step into your gifts, your power, what you actually have to offer, it changes the energy and you actually feel a lot better and the fear goes away. It really does. It's about success, but it's hard to get that success when you're in a place of fear. You need to know how to manage that, that fear, that energy, and then you need to manage your thoughts. But it isn't just about tapping. Tapping's not going to release the fear. It might for a few moments and then the thoughts, the brain comes back with more scary thoughts about how it's going to be terrible, how you're never going to succeed, how you're a failure. And then you're back into fear again. That's what I work on. I help you. I enable my clients to manage the fear and the thoughts. But there's a third thing. Hi, thanks for joining. We're talking about fear. What's the kind of thing that shows up in your life that makes you fearful? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the new year? Are you afraid of making money? Are you afraid of being rejected when you're involved in a new relationship? Post it in, in the um, comment section and I can actually respond to what is the fear that is holding you back from having success in your life. So as I was saying, I work with this client who was, he, she was like totally immobilized. And by getting success, she actually started changing her life. She, when you are successful, you literally attract more success in your life. And the fear goes away. The fear actually goes away. But the first thing is community. Human beings are social creatures. We, we are actually wired to bond to other people. That's why it's so important to have successful relationships. They make us feel successful. And as we feel successful, we actually attract more success in our lives. So how are your relationships? Is your partner encouraging you or criticizing you? Are you getting along with your family members are, or are they judgmental? What about your coaching community if you're a coach or an entrepreneur? Are they having all the success and you aren't and then you in comparison feel like you were a failure? How can you get out of this catch 22, this cycle of failure and then failure breeds, breeds more failure and failure breeds fear and then fear breeds more failure and it goes around and around. You want to get out of that and one of the ways to do that is to have a conversation with me. Let's have a conversation and talk about what your fears are and how you can break through them to change the pattern so that you can bring more success in your life. Whether it's entrepreneurial sex success, not sex, <laughs> entrepreneurial sex, uh, success. And there is sort of a relationship between sex and success. There is powerful energy when it comes to activating that creative area in our body. And success in relationships. If you can get both of those things working together, then you have success in your life all the way around. You feel more positive about yourself. You attract more business. You attract the right kind of relationships and you create happiness and joy in your life. Actually, the universe wills us to be successful, to feel good in our lives. 
but it's really the old habits from our childhood, from the past, from failures that hold us back. And believe me, I know all about this. For years, I struggled with my own fears. I struggled with my own uh, inability to manage my emotions, except by tamping them down. And here's the problem with tamping down the emotions. When you tamp down your emotions, when you hold everything close together, you're not real. People don't believe you, whether it's a partner or it's a client. They don't trust you. So you have to let go. You have to release the fear. You have to release the old patterns. And that's what I specialize in. I work with you to find out where the pattern, the success pattern broke down. Where in your life did you stop believing in yourself? Where in your life did you stop acting from your brilliance, from your divine connection to source? What stopped you from being yourself? And then start reconnect you with that so that you start to have success in life. And I guarantee you, success is the key to happiness. As you start to see the results, you start to feel like you are worthwhile, that you have meaning, that you have purpose, that you are valuable. Hi, thanks for joining. We're talking about fear and success. And I'm curious if uh, fear is getting in the way of your success. And if so, what kind of fear? Are you afraid of making enough money? Are you afraid of calling clients? Are you afraid that your family is not going to have enough money? Are you afraid of judgment by your partner? Are you afraid that everybody's gonna leave you behind because all your, your associates are successful and you're not successful? Are you afraid of being abandoned? These are all fears that we actually develop when we are very young. And they become very deeply wired patterns and they get in the way of success. They get in the way of you having success in your life. Because here's the thing, they show up from the slightest rejection, from the slightest disinterest. And if you're an entrepreneur, you are in danger of falling down that rabbit hole of self-doubt and worry all the time, which sends you off to get, uh, to work harder, more hours, and pushing and pushing but as I said, when you are operating from a place of fear, everybody knows it. Everybody can feel it on a subconscious level and it chases people away. So the first thing to do is, of course, to release the fear. That's a practice. Maybe you already know how to do that. How to, but that's one of the things that I teach my clients, how to release that fear so that you're not operating from that place. How you let go of the self-doubt, how you start to believe in yourself. That is my specialty. I've been working for years with people after a significant loss, after a very important loss. But what I have found is that that loss goes all the way back to, to childhood losses, to losses that happen very early in our lives and that left a mark left a significant pattern in our lives that doesn't go away easily. It's often subconscious and it crops up and it gets in the way of our being successful. And you know what, you're not alone. So many people have this. I have a really <laughs> telling statistic. A um, drug use panel did a study of Americans and they found out that one out of six Americans is on some kind of psychiatric drug, primarily tranquilizers and antidepressants. That shows you something about how much we struggle. And I'll tell you, that doesn't even begin to count 
all the people who are self-medicating through drinking and drugs, overeating, computer games, Facebook, texting, and workaholism. Personally, I believe that workaholism is probably one of the biggest drugs that gets in the way of our success. Because we keep on believing that if we just work harder, we're going to have success. That success is just right around the corner if I just push myself. Again, what I have to say is, if you are operating from a place of fear, if your pushing is coming from a place of fear, no amount of pushing is going to do any good because everybody out there is going to know that you are afraid, that you are desperate. I have a story um, a long time ago. Well, I belong to a spiritual community and I usually go out there once a year. But a number of years ago, I went out to the spiritual community and I had, I had all this great stuff going on in my life in the regular world. And then when I came into the spiritual community, that support, those boyfriends that were making me feel valuable were not there. And I felt alone and abandoned. And I reached out, I wanted connection. And everybody ran away from me because they felt that neediness, that desire, and it really chased people away. Now, fortunately, in a spiritual community, we do a lot of spiritual practices. And it shifted my mindset. And I got into a very, very wonderful place of peace, a wonderful place of contentment. And, and then I noticed that people were all there for me. They all showed up again because I was no longer in that place of neediness. So the problem with fear is it puts us in a place of neediness, needing safety, needing money, needing, hi, thank you for joining. I'm talking about fear and how it gets in the way of success in your life. So I hope you will post in the comments what kind of fears get in the way of your success. Are you trying to have more success at uh, relationships? Are you trying to have more success in business? Are you trying to have more success in your health? Fear is a problem. Now, fear is natural. It's part of our human existence. It helps to keep us alive. It helps us to avoid things that are dangerous. But for human beings, we take it to another level that gets us into a lot of trouble because we have these amazing minds that think about all these things and bring fear that might not even be here in the present, whatever's causing the fear, but we think about it and we trigger the fear in our bodies. And it actually gets in the way of us acting. It, fear is immobilizing. It either causes you to run away and hide or literally to freeze. And that, it makes it very hard for you to take action. You need to take action because there is no success without action. Yeah, yeah, you know, you can tap, you can, you can do the law of attraction and you can set intentions, but it actually takes action. You need to take steps. But the problem is that if you take action from a place of fear, you are, you're not going to be successful because everybody out there will feel that need that you have to be safe. And when we're fearful, we put up barriers between us and the outside world. And people feel it and they run away. So what can you do? Well, I invite you to have a conversation with me. There's a link in the comments section. I offer a free introductory conversation, 15 minutes, to tell you, to find out whether or not my work can help you and what my prices are. And then, if we are a match, we can go forward after that. If you're looking for a solution, please click on the link or send me a message and let's schedule a time to talk. Hi, Robbie. Thanks for watching. So today I'm talking about fear and how fear gets in the way. 
Now fear <clears throat> could really be coming up for this new year. First of all, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, astrologically, and in terms of the politics in the country, and you know the the fact that the that people maybe don't have as much money as they they need and of course we're just coming off the holidays and maybe you've spent a lot of money and and you're wondering how you're going to pay your bills maybe you overspent in that exuberance and all those 60% off and and besides you've been holding back for a long time and and then you get caught up in that energy of spending and so now you're facing the new year and you're saying, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pay for those bills? How am I gonna get my business going? Maybe, you, maybe your business was not as successful last year as, it, as, it, as you wanted, or maybe it was successful and now you're saying, well, how can I repeat that again? Whatever your fear. Maybe your, your fear is that uh, you, your relationships are not working out right. Maybe your husband or partner is telling you to give up on this entrepreneurship because you're not succeeding and give it up already. You spend all your time working and when is there going to be success? That can create a lot of fear. That can create a lot of um, uh, distrust of yourself, self-doubt and worry. And the more worried and fearful you are, the more difficult it is for you to actually have success. First of all, because it's hard to take action, because it's a fearful thing to take action because you're afraid of being rejected. And you know what? It's not your fault. Human beings are really wired to fear rejection. We are social creatures and we want to feel included. We want to feel that we belong. And when there's the slightest rejection or disinterest, oh, it hits you at the core. And it makes you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this anymore. Doesn't it almost make you want to go back to some dull job where at least you get a paycheck and you can be counting on that? Although what I have found is that if you are true, you're connected to your spiritual being, and if you're connected to your gifts, the universe does not want you playing small. That was what happened to me when I was playing small, which I did for years and years. I cannot believe how long I played small because I was afraid of rejection. And the universe kept on throwing me these uh, devastations, these terrible wake up calls. The first one was that I lost a job that I thought, you know, I was doing everything right. Then I lost my first husband. He left me for another woman. And then my then I had a terrible rejection with my spiritual teacher. And then finally, I got into my relationship with my current husband and I decided I needed to do things, something about this, or I was going to lose this relationship. But I tell you, I was, I was in my 40s before I started changing. And what finally was the tipping point for me was my mother's death. Shortly before she died, we had a conversation in her studio. My mother was a toy designer. She was kind of the poster child for living a life true to yourself, to the neglect of her children. But boy, she lived full of passion. So anyway, we were sitting in her studio and looking at some of her designs. Now, she was actively dying. She had stopped chemo, she had, she had cancer, and she only had a couple of weeks left to live. And we were going through some of her papers. And I picked up a piece of paper, it was a Xerox of one of her designs. And I said, do you need this anymore? And she looked at the paper and she said, oh, I guess I'll never get to that project. Well, my emotions were just newly online and it blew me away. I was so, I was like deer in the headlights, fear, and I ran away. I said, oh, we don't need to deal with this right now. Let's deal with something else. And I changed the subject. And later, 
I thought, oh my God, I missed this opportunity to connect with her. Her regret became my regret. I regretted that I didn't say to her, wow, what does that feel like? What is that like to not have enough time? And then of course, I took that in. What does it feel like to not have enough time? You know, the reality is that we never know how much time we have. And it's time now to make a decision to live on purpose. And yes, I know it's scary. I decided the first thing I decided to do was to make a documentary film about death. And I had never made a documentary film. But that, that moment was so inspiring and so compelling that the fear of dying, of regret, far outweighed the fear of making a film. And I just, step by step, I move forward. So that's another key. So the one key that I said is success. And so once you start getting success, life gets a lot easier. But the other thing is a compelling vision. What is it that you wanna do in this precious lifetime? And what's holding you back? What fear is holding you back? And what are you gonna do about it? If you have enjoyed this conversation and you are interested in how I work, please book a 15 minute conversation with me. And Let's see if we're a match. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and Happy New Year. Be brilliant and bye for now.